The middle series finale recap, tears, laughs, and one last road trip. After nine seasons, the hex of ABC's The Middle will say goodbye. Stars Patricia Heaton and Neil Flynn talk about the ups and downs of the financially struggling middle class Indiana family. It's moving day in the middle of series finale as Mike, Neil Flynn, left, and Frankie, Patricia Heaton, prepare to drive Ixl, Charlie McDermott, from Indiana to his new job in Denver. The middle ended not with a bang, but a whisper. And a pitch perfect one at that, youngest child Brick reprised a beloved speech quirk, repeating a phrase in this case, the middle under his breath as the Heck family drove into sitcom history at the end of Tuesday Sweet, funny and emotional series finale. The ABC comedy, about a cash-strapped Indiana family, ended its nine-season run contemplating the breakup of the five-member unit, as Frankie, Patricia Heaton. Mike, Neil Flynn, Sue, Eden Schur, and Brick, Atticus Schaffer, brace for oldest child Axel's, Charlie McDermott, move to Denver for a new job. The show was a bit melodramatic about the impact of Axel's departure he's heading to Colorado, not the moon but a child's move from the nest counts as a family crisis in a show that's always been so good at finding humor drama and emotion in the routines of daily life. The one-hour goodbye, a heck of a ride, was a people-pleasing, Sue Heck quality scrapbook of familiar characters, places and signature items, the death napkin, microfish and the blue bag, which was, for once, blue, from more than 200 episodes. And there was some drama. As long-suffering Sue and neighbor Sean Donahue, Bo Wirick, finally share their romantic feelings in a show where love is rarely expressed verbally, even if it's clearly there. It was comfort food in the highest sense of the word, and the higher than usual tears to laughs ratio, not that there weren't plenty of laughs, echoed the feelings of cast, producers and fans for the beloved sitcom. The finale picks up with Axel's late night declaration from the previous episode that has taken a job in Denver, leaving his mother crying in the darkness. Frankie takes comfort in being held by Mike and, perhaps even more, from an emergency stash of cookies. She struggles to appear like a distanced, cool mom, hoping that will persuade Axel to return for frequent visits. His siblings don't have a problem expressing their emotions, Sue cries and yearns for a moment with her lifelong tormentor, while Brick takes measurements for a reading lounge in their shared bedroom. Ixa thinks he has a month to plan his departure until pragmatic Mike tells his adult oldest child, in the last of McDermott's underpants only scenes, that he's confused May for June on the calendar. Stop standing there like Bobo the executive boy. Put on some pants and start packing. That means a family road trip, typically full of arguments, and Brick is not looking forward to it.
nobody's happy on them. We like them only in retrospect, he says. Rick, always stuck in the middle, calls dibs on the window seat and protects his territory with an overnight vigil. Ixl, puzzled by Brick's lack of emotion about his departure, joins him and learns his brother thinks of the split as a life-changing loss. I'm trying to figure out what my room is without you in it, Brick says. I'll miss you. Sue joins them, complaining that Brick got the emotional moment she wanted, before Ixel confesses, the goodbye thing is hard for me, okay, maybe hardest to say to you. That's the nicest thing Ixel could have said to her, and the three siblings fall asleep in the car in the episode's sweetest moment. As the family leaves, their neighbors, the Donahues, and other friends wave goodbye to Axel, and also to the show's fans. But before the family is out of the driveway, they're fighting. These are the Hex, after all. On the road, Frankie senses a true heck disaster, the family is about to exceed its data plan and incur the dreaded overage charges, so she orders her kids off their phones, just as Sean, heading through airport security on a three-month trip to Ghana, discovers the snow globe Sue left in his bag. Suddenly, the family is being chased by a speeding car, the only one in sight. It's Sean, who after several near misses, professes his love for Sue, who finally finds herself in a situation worthy of her unbridled enthusiasm. But that's not the final unscheduled stop. When Axel says he wants to be taken off the family data plan, Frankie can't take it anymore. She tells Mike to pull over, gets out and has a meltdown. It's the end of an era, she pines. It's never going to be the same again. That's the way it's supposed to be, Mike says, as we flash forward to the family's post-middle lives, X is a suit-wearing businessman who comes home to three sons sitting in their underwear on the couch. Mike and I got the greatest revenge, Frankie says in voiceover. Brick, in full beard and mustache, becomes the author of a wildly successful book series about a quirky kid and his magical microfish machine. And Sue finally marries Sean. Frankie explains she and Mike never won the lottery, 
patch the hole in the bedroom wall or replace the broken washing machine, but for all the things we didn't have, we sure had a lot. With that, it's back to the present, as the hex drive by a cornfield that looks like the one in the opening credits. Brick, caught between bickering Ixl and Sue, laments, this is why I don't want to sit in the middle. He then whispers, the middle. Safe travels, pet family.